Um, the real curve will uninvert. It probably won't go to 150 basis points. It'll probably go to 50 or 75 or whatever it is, much like Japan did. It will uninvert. And everybody on Twitter is going to go, oh my God, the market's going to crash. And it crashes when they do rate cuts. And guess what? Market's going to just go up because the business cycle, the liquidity cycle, financial conditions are all going higher. Um, Bitcoin Zella stands out with its simplicity and clarity. We've crafted an experience that anyone can dive into, whether you're a crypto expert or just a new to the crypto world. Now, guess who keeps his eye on us? The author of best-selling book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. And we want to take this opportunity and thank all the people who trusted us. And we read every comment. And the best part, it's free. Subscribing now means you will get all new information for free. Don't just follow the trends, stay ahead of them. Subscribe to Bitcoin Zella today and enjoy the new edge. In today's video, Raul Pal answers some good questions about culture, crypto, the banana zone, the everything code, lifestyle chips, and where we are today in the big picture outlook. We've gone through this before. XRP, it's like from two bull markets about ago. You might be right. You might love it forever. Just please move to whatever the strong momentum is. I know there's that fear in your head is this time it'll be the big one. You'll get plenty of notification you get back in, but don't miss the bull market because you're in a narrative of past. I beg you, I begged you and begged you, don't do this. And the communities are huge. I, I feel like, and I, I don't want to get attacked by people online for this, but I just feel like you're being done a disservice by being in a cult. Our job is to be mercenaries. We're in the job to make money, not to be a cult. Cults don't make money except for the leaders. Be a mercenary. Lend out your capital to the opportunities that will offer you the best risk-adjusted return. So I, I know it hurts people when I say this. Cardano, XRP, there's a whole bunch of these. I really hope you're right, but hope is not an investment strategy. Okay? So I'm not trying to insult you. I'm not trying to be rude. Please just understand my heart is coming from a good place. I'm trying to help you all. Okay, if you only have $100 to allocate, what would be your allocation between Tesla, Coin, Sol, and others? Well, as you know, I'm, I'm all Sol, but... But really? I mean, I think if you put a third, a third, a third between those two stocks and came away in four years' time, five years' time, uh, you'll have made a lot of money. Um, what are your thoughts on Elon Musk's current political actions what could be intended and unintended consequences for the businesses associated with them? Are we sick, clear of politics? Yeah. He's clearly doubled down, um, as have many. And I think because the threat is more existential for all of their businesses as well. Um, I get it, but they've really dug in. So I don't know how it plays out. We'll see in a significant update to the United Arab Emirates judiciary approach to crypto. The Dubai Court of First Instance recognizes salary payments in crypto as valid under employment contracts. Marina Hever, a partner at UAE law firm Neos Legal, explained that the ruling in case number 1739 of 2024 shows a shift from the court's earlier stance in 2023, where a similar claim was denied because the crypto involved lacked precise valuation. Hever believes this shows a progressive approach to integrating digital currencies into the country's legal and economic framework. Hever said that the case involved an employee who filed a lawsuit claiming that the employer had not paid their wages, wrongful termination compensation, and other benefits. The workers' employment contract stipulated a monthly salary in fiat and 5,250 in ECOWA tokens. The dispute stems from the employer's inability to pay the token's portion of the employee's salary in six months. In 2023, the court acknowledged the inclusion of the ECOWATS tokens in the contract. Still, it did not enforce the payment in crypto, as the employee failed to provide a clear method for valuing the currency in fiat terms. This decision reflected a traditional viewpoint, emphasizing the need for concrete evidence when dealing with unconventional payment forms, Hever said. However, the lawyer said that in 2024, the court took a step forward. 
ruling in favor of the employee and ordering the payment of the crypto salary as per the employment contract without converting it into fiat. Hever said, This decision reflects a broader acceptance of cryptocurrency in employment contracts and highlights the court's recognition of the evolving nature of financial transactions within the Web3 economy. Thoughts on the idea that China's lack of new credit and potential crashing house prices in place in the similar, similar position to Japan in the 90s. Will markets cope okay with this? Or will it lead to a protracted, protracted sideways movement? The Chinese stock market peaked in, what, 2008? It's it's exactly the replay of China of Japan. So the Chinese stock market stopped going up. And the Chinese property market stopped going up. Um, like Japan, they continue to buy raw materials and other goods, and they're still a huge economy and um, all of that. So, yeah, I think it is like Japan, but I don't see there's any catastrophic downside, just a general slowing of growth of the global economy, which is something I've talked about, aging populations, slow economies. There's, is the dollar going up or down? I think most of this is because the dollar goes down anyway, so that's the denominator effect. Now, obviously, versus yen and whatever, they're all should be going up versus the dollar over this stage in the business cycle, so they will perform less well than Bitcoin dollar, let's say, or dollar Bitcoin versus Bitcoin euro, Bitcoin yen. Um, the left behind is we've got to bring as many people as possible and hope that economic growth and other things help. Um, I think economic growth changes the debt slave economy. Um, it's not easy to help the underprivileged. I mean, you know, I'm a European. I actually believe in a welfare state. Others don't. Um, you have to figure some way of solving it because, because in the end, it creates civil unrest. You might say, fine, not everybody should be equal. And I agree. You know, it's a meritocracy out there. But the richer nations get, the higher the baseline should be. Um, so I don't know. I, just trying to help as many people as possible, I think, makes that difference. So let's just keep doing what we're doing. Andre, what the fuck are you guy and your targets? I don't know. I'm not a bloody guru. I don't have a crystal ball. I just can't draw a chart and say it probably goes up. And then you make some random guess. And then the whole of the internet holds you accountable and says, you fuckwit, you told me it was going to do this. I'm just so tired of that game. Normally, yes, if I speak to friends, I say, yeah, I think it's going to X, Y, Z. Put it out on the internet and you get hounded for literally five years by people saying you were wrong, you're a moron, you help people lose money. I'm just not going to play that game anymore. Sick of it. Um, I'm actually angry about it. I'm angry because it still happens. Happened the other day, some dick about the ETH thing. You said it's going to go to 15,000. You're a moron. Why should we listen to you? Really? If you think us all to get it right and have a crystal ball, we'd all be gazillion, bazillion, gazillionaires and not be doing that. I mean, it's just, just so stupid. So no, uh, look, I think it goes up a lot. The number of institutional holders and ETF pairs rose by 30% from Q1, growing from 1,479 to 1,924 in Q2. This increase occurred despite a decline in Bitcoin's value. Institutional investors demonstrated what Hogan referred to as diamond hands, holding their assets through the market downturn without panic selling. Hedge funds remain at the forefront of Bitcoin ETF investments, with major players like Millennium, Schoenfeld, and Booth Bay among the top holders. Hogan observed that these funds are joined by a diverse range of institutional investors, including family offices and wealth managers, indicating a broadening interest in Bitcoin ETF. He emphasized that this variety in investor profiles contributes to the robustness of the ETF market, as it attracts a wide range of participants into the Bitcoin space. Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs boosted their exposure to Bitcoin ETF in Q2. Morgan Stanley reported owning over 5.5 million shares of BlackRock's Shares Bitcoin Trust, IBIT, valued at $188 million as of June 30. This position placed Morgan Stanley among the top five IBIT fund holders. Goldman Sachs, in contrast, held more than $238 million in shares of IBIT and other spot Bitcoin ETF. And do not forget to subscribe to Bitcoin Seller. The most important news will reach your inbox on a daily basis and for free. 
I do not know why you have not subscribed yet. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power, and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing!